These are the parts that make up the main body for the probe. See here, this is a piece of ceramic. This will be the main insulator for the body. This will be the outside insulator. The Teflon insert here is for the tip. If you look down in there, you can see that the end of that lip actually protrudes and fits inside of the ceramic. So that's a press fit into the inside bore of the ceramic tube. There's enough clearance in there to use copper foil and this will act as the shield. the main insulator. See here the handle will fit in here and this hold is for the shield. The copper strap just fits inside and then the braid will come out the back. And this hole here is for the bore for our phenolic tube. I'll just slide in like so. You see how the shielded ceramic tube will fit in. And this piece will fit over the top of this. Like so. You can see the phenolic tube slides into the end here. Then the end cap will fit on here. Fairly snug fit. So I've gone ahead and made changes now to the probe to convert this over to a 10,000X. The biggest problem I have now is I don't have a good way to generate a high frequency real high voltage pulse. Looking at the probe at a thousand to one I can tune it for a fairly flat response across the range that I'm interested in but as soon as I convert it to a ten thousand to one I'm not really sure how flat the frequency response of it is. My plan for this uh, probe was to be able to use this thing at about forty thousand volts DC or about eighty thousand volts peak so really safety becomes an issue working at those high voltages. As you can see here I've attached it's about 50 foot of coax here to the output of the probe. And that's what uh, the compensation networks is currently tuned to. You can see it's attached to the output of my high voltage power supply. It's currently attached to my Syntec meter. So if I go ahead and turn this on. Currently this probe is set for a 10,000X. So with a 10 meg input with a thousand volts you'll read a hundred millivolts. I can get some fairly fast slew rates with this power supply. Currently there's two compensation networks in there for the frequency adjustment. It's probably going to take a third compensation before I'm going to be real happy with this but uh, right now the results look pretty promising. You can see here the shielding with the shielding attached. I can move my hand around the front. It has really no effect on this. If I go ahead and turn on our power supply, this is a thousand volts. And again, if I move my hand around it, there's no effect. Part of the challenge with testing something like this now is I can't just hook it up to a network analyzer to tune it. And I can't even use my uh, RF generators. RF generators I have, uh, the one will put out about three volts. Um, on average, the other one will put out about ten volts peak to peak. And the problem with those is uh, you start attenuating it down and it's basically at the limit of what these scopes can do. So I'd have to actually hook up another amplifier to the output of the probe to be able to do any kind of measurement like that. So to look at the frequency of this, again this is uh, attached to my pulser here. So if I just go ahead and I'll hook this thing up to our scope. You can see down here, scope attenuation, 
you can just set this to 10,000 to 1. See currently it's set at 500 volts per division. And we have two divisions. I'll just do measure, standard vertical. You can see it's about a kilovolt. So here we can see I can drive the pulsar to the positive. Again, I can drive it negative. So I've got my signal generator hooked up to my pulsar. You can see the pulsar is putting out a both positive and negative voltage. What I'll do is I'll set this back to just putting out a positive edge. Okay, so currently it's set for 1,000 volts per division. This is one division or about 1,000 volts. It's actually reading about 1,013 right now. So this is at uh, 500 millisecond per division, or a 1 hertz square wave. This is at 10 hertz here. This is 100 hertz. This is at 1 kilohertz. This is at 10 kilohertz. This is pretty close to the limit of the pulsar here. This is 30 kilohertz, and you can see the pulsar is fading out right about there. And that's the limit of the power I can get out of this. So this is 20 kilohertz here. So you can see the compensation's all right, uh, but it definitely needs another stage to it really clean this thing up a little bit better but it's definitely usable right now so I've got my little grill igniter here I'm just gonna go ahead and one side's attached to our ground so we're currently at 20,000 volts per division And the scope is showing this to be about uh, 70,000 volts. I'm not sure how accurate that is. I think uh, that's going to be the next problem is how do you actually validate this thing at real high voltages. And I know I'm going to have to give it some thought I guess as to how to actually go ahead and make this measurement. The arb set to 10 volts peak to peak. With the output of this thing terminated into 50 ohms. And you can see on the scope, see currently it's set to 5 volts per division. Or 10 volts out. So let's just go ahead and we'll plug this into our, our fluke. And the fluke reads 3.527. So I'm saying the fluke is probably an RMS number. The manual doesn't actually say anywhere if it's RMS or average but it does appear to be RMS. Just looking at the neon sign transformer you can see it has a secondary voltage of 12,000 volts. Okay with the sign transformer rated at 12,000 volts I'm not really sure if that's average or RMS but we would expect somewhere around uh, 1.2 to maybe 1.4 volts coming out of the output of our probe here which is attached directly across the output of the transformer and go into our Fluke 101. So let's just see here what we get. 